my name is Vaishali and today I wanted to bring your attention to something that it has been playing a critical role in our lives but just because we are not stepping out doesn't mean that the problem um, has died down. Um, I'm actually talking about air pollution and I'm talking about the air that we're breathing in and out every second. Um, you know, so basically it was um, in response to a very fundamental question that um, why air is important and why is the question of clean air so essential for a healthy life. Um, every day I and my family take in more air uh, than any other substance. We take in 17,000 to 30,000 breaths a day. Your apartment is your sanctuary, where you retreat after a long day, take a deep breath and relax. But is the air quality in your apartment clean and healthy? Indoor air can be up to 5x more polluted than outdoor air. According to the EPA and major studies, including the World Health Organization, they kind of concluded that air quality has a huge impact on your health. Since we spend so much of our time indoors, it becomes even more imperative for us to be aware that there are a plethora of air pollutants that can accumulate in the home. Most obvious is dust when it builds up over time on surfaces. Indian construction industry is booming. I am based in Gurgaon. I have five houses being built in the near vicinity. Every morning, I wake up to dust accumulating not just on the glass, but it finds its way indoors. Those who have pets do witness hair on carpets, buildup of mold in damp environments, and Delhi winters brings out the worst. Spores of mold or other fungi can cause allergies and symptoms related to allergy, similar to pollen. And twice in a year, pollen that is drawn in through open windows triggers allergic reactions. What's more problematic is that most indoor pollutants are invisible to human eye. Have you heard of VOCs? Do you know what they are? They are called volatile organic compounds. Did you know that there are fumes released from new furniture, cleaning solvents, deodorants, scented candles and glasses from Kulik cooking? That's what our naked eyes don't see. The reason why it is important to build awareness about air pollution is because most air pollution cannot be smelled. The smaller the particle, the bigger is the problem. Um, the respiratory system can deal with particles larger than 10 microns in diameter as they're normally filtered by the nose and throat, enabling us to cough or sneeze them out. But our lungs, they work very hard um, to get rid of those bodies. Smaller PM can get deeper into the body. Particles that are 2.5 microns or smaller in diameter penetrate to the alveoli and terminal bronchioles in the lungs and are removed from the body more, uh, you know, kind of gradually. It kind of takes a long time, uh, which gives them more time to impair healthy cells and tissues. So imagine, um, you know, our lungs are working so hard to get rid of something and the process is so slow. In that process or during that process, a lot is happening within our body. So you can imagine. Ultra fine particles, which is basically less than 0.1 microns in diameter, may even pass through the lung tissue into the bloodstream and then circulate in the whole body. When I talk about 0.1 micron, I actually mean that even tinier than our uh, hair, uh, uh, one hair strand, you know, diameter. Since pollutants come in many different shapes and sizes, it's equally important to have a right cleaning system um, that kind of maintains the um, uh, the ecosystem of your house, the environment of your house. So what happens if the air quality you breathe in day in day out is very low or um, it's poor? What What's happening to you? According to doctors, the most common short-term effects of unhealthy air include irritation of the eyes, nose and throat, headaches and dizziness, skin and digestive issues, fatigue, and long-term exposure to poor air quality gets a lot more serious and can include you know, cancer, heart disease, respiratory diseases such as 
chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is also called a COPD. My recent discovery is based on smart technology. Dyson engineers have calibrated the sensors inside the machines with scientific particular readers. HEPA filters, which are also called as HEPA filters, whether in a vacuum or a purifier, are highly effective at capturing fine dust particles such as pollen, bacteria, mold, dust mite, debris, and pet dander. But HEPA filters alone will not remove volatile organic compounds. They have the same VOCs we talked about, such as chem chemical fumes, cigarette smokes, or odors. The Dyson purifier, however, can not only sense, but also capture and remove both ultra-fine particles and harmful volatile organic compounds present in the air due to the combination of a 360-degree HEPA filter. It's also convenient to say that Dyson Air Purifier has been tested for real homes. The current regulatory test method, which is CADR test, is a test that has been around since the 80s. This is done in a much smaller 12 square meter room and the purifier is kept in the middle of the room. There is one air quality sensor in the room to detect the change in pollution levels. Interestingly, this test is also done with a ceiling fan, helping the spread of clean air around the room. The challenge, however, is that this isn't exactly representative of the the real world environment. We do not keep purifiers in the middle of the room, is it? After this test, purifiers are given a rating. But the point is, an air purifier with a high CADR rating is not a true indicator of whether it may be cleaning air and removing even the smallest particles from the indoor air. On the contrary, Polar Test, pioneered by Dyson, and a co-accreditation released by China's Household Appliance Standard and Technology Industry Alliance, has a lab which is essentially a room that is a 27 square meter in size. There's no added ceiling fan in the room. That is a sound logic since the peak pollution season in India is winter and we don't use fans at that time of the year. As part of this test, the air purifier in question is placed in one corner of the room. Pretty much how you would probably keep it in your living room or bedroom. The pollutants are then added to the room from the other corner, which is perhaps the toughest test of strength for an air purifier. The sensors can detect particles as much 300 times smaller than a strand of human hair. Another important element of this test is the auto mode. All purifiers are tested at the automatic settings.